Hey there, I'm Johnny and you're watching The Art of Science. Air is all around us. Now this air has a certain weight and it presses against everything it touches. This is what we call air pressure. It happens in liquids as well. Liquids also have weight and exert pressure on the liquid around it and also on the walls of the container that it is poured into. Using the scientific principle in liquids, you can make these two Cartesian diver games. When we apply force and squeeze the bottle, we increase the pressure, which increases the pressure on the water inside it. Now this water in turn exerts pressure on the dropper. This forces some of the water to go inside the dropper and compress the air inside it. To learn what compression of air is, check out this video linked up here and in the description box as well. Now the compressed air and the water inside the dropper increase the mass of the dropper. It now weighs more than it did when the bottle was not squeezed and so it sinks down. The link to all the videos are up here and in the description box as well. Before we check out some fun experiments on air pressure, why don't you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. In fact, hovercrafts work on the principle of air pressure. The air inside the balloon is compressed and has high pressure. This air has nowhere else to escape but through the bottom of the CD. Now this creates a thin film of air between the CD and the table on which the hovercraft simply hovers. Just a little push and it will go in any direction you want it to. Not just hovercrafts, but pressure in air can also be used for making launchers. Like this one with a bottle and a straw and this one with a bottle and a pipe. The bottle already has air inside it. When we squeeze the bottle, we force this volume of air out of the small opening of the straw and the tube. Now since the same volume of air has to travel through a narrower tube, the pressure and speed of air increases and this pressure of air thrusts the rocket upwards. And finally, combining air and water pressure, you can make this cool self-serving teapot. When you blow into the teapot, you apply pressure on the water inside. The water, now pressurized, finds its way out through the spout of the teapot. Why don't you experiment with different spout sizes and blowing air with different force and pressure to see how it affects the amount of water coming out of the spout? Let us know in the comments below what you find out. And we'll see you next week.